Ecamm Live Beta version 3.10 has just been released and it's another good one. You're not going to want to miss this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and uh, in this video I'm going to be telling you all about the uh, latest features that have been packed in to the latest Ecamm Live beta release. I do always like waking up to uh, a new release of the beta because I never cease to be amazed by exactly what they've uh, managed to fit into it and uh, they do work so tirelessly, tires, tirelessly <laughs> if I can speak properly, to uh, really answer the community in terms of uh, what people are wanting. And by they, I do mean the hundreds of developers behind Ecamm Live. Uh, I'm being sarcastic. It's just Ken and Glenn, the twins, <laughs> and they do amazing work. So uh, let's get into it, shall we? And uh, we are talking about Ecamm Live version 3.10, but it is the beta. It's not the final release yet. Uh, if you are not on the beta program, uh, there is very strict entry requirements. All you have to do is navigate to <laughs> the uh, the link that I'll put in the description, uh, and you can just download it. So it's free for anybody to uh, try out. Um, now, I should just caution you that it is a beta and the whole point of beta software is that there may be one or two little niggles or things like that that is the point of it to iron out those final few little issues before it is uh, put into the final release that said i do use the beta exclusively <laughs> i rarely use the uh, the main version now uh, because it is just generally quite uh, quite stable and there's no uh, sort of production issues for me but i do just need to uh, warn you about that so as i say i'll leave a link for you to go and download the beta if you want to try it out you can install them both by the way you don't have to choose from one or the other you can download both the regular version of ecamm and the beta version uh, and then you can open one and try it out and then you can flick back to the other and go back to the regular version if you want so they do run in parallel you don't have to make a choice there. There are a couple of things to note which I'll get to a bit later uh, where settings that you set up in the beta uh, will sometimes and sometimes not translate over into the regular version but I'll explain that in more detail a little bit later. So if you are already using the beta then if you open up Ecamm Live you should be prompted to update. If you've already got it open or you haven't been prompted uh, then all you need to do is if I just come into my screen sharing mode, my demo mode rather, <laughs> uh, then come up to the Ecamm Live beta menu at the top here uh, and then click down here on check for updates and there you'll be able to uh, get the latest update. Once you do do that, uh, then what you'll find is you will be prompted to install and you'll get a little window that pops up like this. This includes the release notes. You're probably familiar with this if you've ever installed any update to any software on your Mac before. <laughs> so it's got a list of all the features. That's what I'm going to be going through today. I'm going to be giving some context to them uh, and explaining exactly uh, what they are and how they work. Uh, and so you just go ahead and click install update. Now, when you do install the update, you'll also be prompted if you are a Stream Deck user to update the plugin for that as well so this will be a little pop-up so just go ahead and do that there are a couple of little minor adjustments to uh, the plugin in the back end really but I'll come to those a little bit later as well so let's have a look shall we at exactly what is covered and I've grouped all of these different features into some uh, for me at least <laughs> logical groupings uh, and so we're going to start with um, overlays and having a look at the changes that have been made to overlays so Let's get straight into that, shall we? Uh, so if I come into my demo mode again, one second, I'll bring that up. <laughs> Lost my uh, Stream Deck buttons. Here I am in my, uh, this is my Ecamm Live uh, setup. And so we are currently, let's just go to this main scene. So I'm in my main scene. So what is the first thing with overlays? Well, you may have been familiar before if I was to add in, let's say I add in a camera overlay. So there we go, I've got another camera overlay. You can see how I've got these little alignment marks that are coming up, so it's showing me where the uh, the center is. Uh, and then also if I move it to the edge, you'll see that I get some alignment marks at the center. It also, as you just saw it flick on, on there, it actually also does quarters as well. So you could get sort of like a quarter of the way in, which is handy obviously if you are doing something where you might want to have uh, this aligned to this quarter. Uh, and then maybe another one that's aligned to the other quarter. Well, now what you can see, now that I've just created two of these, uh, this is sort of giving away the feature because the feature is you can now align overlays with one another. So can you see that we've now got these two extra uh, lines, one sort of here, <laughs> if you look at my main image behind, and one here. Uh, so that is now basically aligning to that other overlay and it works with uh, the edges. So you can align the top with the bottom, for example, or you can align the, uh, the top and the bottom uh, and obviously the uh, left and right. Uh, and you've also got this uh, alignment over here, if I just do like that. There we go. So we can get these nice and uh, nice and centered. Now this will work with um, all overlays. 
Having said that, I have just tried it with the image overlays and it seems like it's not quite working with that. So uh, I think that that is perhaps something that uh, this is the point of a beta. There might be a little update coming so that it also works with image overlays, but certainly it works with uh, camera overlays and it works with uh, screen share overlays at the moment as well. So you can't have got those little alignment tools. Now, another thing that you can do um, with uh, overlays is you can actually add in uh, fly-in. So before you may have been familiar with a text overlay. So if I was to just add a quick text overlay, uh, as an example, <laughs> so I'll just call it example, <laughs> then uh, that is there. Let me just bring this up here. Uh, we have had this since the last version. Uh, what you can do is basically you can have the uh, the, uh, the style, the position, you could have fly in from the left or right, for example. So if I save that, and now if I toggle that text overlay on and off, then you can see it flies in and out. Well, now basically, we've also got that for our overlays, uh, image overlays and camera overlays as well. So let me just come back to uh, my two camera overlays. Where were they? These two. So now I've got these two camera overlays. Now, if you click the uh, little pencil next to them, uh, you've got this extra transition button here. So you can drop down that and you could have this one say fly in from the left and this one fly in from the right. And now if I was to go uh, off that scene and then come back to that scene, you'll see that those cameras, oops, I think I didn't actually set that one correctly. <laughs> there we go. I mustn't have selected that. There we go. That's better. So let me try that again. I'll come to the next scene, uh, flick back to that original scene, uh, and you can see that the camera overlays fly in. You'll also may have noticed that I did that when I was talking about that Stream Deck pop-up. That one also flew in from the uh, the right uh, and exactly the same. So with image overlays, if I just get rid of these ones, it works exactly the same with image overlays, with movie overlays, with uh, with everything. So animated overlays, I should say. Uh, you've just got this little drop down here uh, on the images that you can select where you want it to fly in from. Uh, and incidentally, when you hide it as well, it will also similarly uh, fly uh, out from the same direction. So if I just click fly in or, or unhide the overlay, overlay it flies in and then if I were to hide it again uh, by clicking on this one uh, then it would fly out and that's the same if it was uh, assigned to a uh, stream deck button as well obviously it would just fly in and out. The other thing related to overlays is uh, we've obviously been able to add in uh, JPEGs, PNGs, things like that before. Well they've also added in support for um, uh, web images, which are the uh, web P type files. So before those ones just wouldn't come in. I mean, they could easily be converted, but it was just an extra step that needed to be done. Whereas now those uh, web P files are actually uh, just, it can be just dragged in just as you could before. So that was a few little things in the uh, uh, overlays section. So let's also now have a look at what's new in scenes because there is a great feature that we've always sort of had a little hack for before, but this is the thing that they're great at is actually just building in these features that uh, people want so that they are just native features. So let me come back to uh, my demo mode again. Uh, so before we did always have the uh, in the scenes window I'm looking at here, we've had a place to add a new scene. We've also had the duplicate scene and we've also had folders. Well, what you'll see now is there is a new one that looks like a little folder with a clock on it. <laughs> and basically what that does is this one is a uh, they're calling an automatic group. And this one allows you to cycle between the scenes that are in it uh, with different timings. So if I was to say drag, I've got scene one here, a demo scene one. Let me just drag that into that folder. So now you can see that I've basically got this, this group here, uh, this folder, and it's got these two different scenes in it. They're basically the same, except one is slightly zoomed out, so you can just see the difference between them. Uh, and then what you can do is there's a little cogwheel next to the uh, the title. So I'm just going to call this, uh, let's call this cycle, shall we? <laughs> and then if I click on the little cogwheel, you can set the interval that you want between those scenes. So if I just put two seconds, for example, uh, and then I play here, this uh, scene grouping, um, then what you'll see is it's basically just every second going to flick between those two scenes. So uh, that is the way that those work. So that's great if you have got a, uh, a number of different shots, perhaps you've got a sort of over the shoulder shot, a front on shot, something like that, or even something like this really, where you want to just sort of break up the, uh, the flow of the video by just sort of occasionally zooming in, zooming out, something like that. Probably not every two seconds, that's a bit much, <laughs> but if you want to change that to something more reasonable, 
10 or 20 seconds or something like that then it could just add a little bit of interest into the uh, into the video but uh, there's lots of different use cases for that cycling through all sorts of different scenes uh, as well so that is basically the uh, big change that came in scenes or the big addition I should say that came in scenes so uh, let's have a little look at what's next so let's have a look at the uh, audio additions so uh, there are a couple of things here with audio. In fact, let me just stop this uh, scene from cycling. And what I'm actually going to do is just move this one completely out of here. <laughs> there are some great additions with, um, with audio. Um, so if you have had audio playing in a scene before, um, then when you move to a next scene, then it will generally stop. You can always play audio in the background, but before, if you actually had the audio assigned to that scene. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me come back into demo mode. Uh, let's say that I've got a little track here and I want to just add it into this scene. So this music will play, but when I change to a new scene, this is the existing behavior, um, then that music will uh, stop ordinarily. <laughs> In fact, I think I've, what I've done is, hang on a minute, let me just backtrack here. <laughs> what I need to do is uh, just stop this one second. There we go. <laughs> I've got one step ahead of myself <laughs> because I'd already checked this out. In the existing behavior, when you have got an audio track in a, uh, in a scene like that, <laughs> when you move to that scene, the track will play. So this is where you've got it embedded. You've actually dragged it into the scene. When you move to the next scene, the music would always stop. Whereas now what they've done is they've given you the ability to actually have that music continue to play. So it's still triggered by that scene, um, but once you get out of that scene, then the music can continue to play if you want. So if I click on this little cogwheel here and say stop when scene ends, that's the little toggle, then you can take that off. You've also got a way here to adjust the volume on a scene by scene basis. So we have always had the um, option to change the music volume here on a sort of track by track basis, but now they've just added it into here. So what's the point of that? Why would you have it in here as well as in here? Well, what this means is you could potentially have a chain of three scenes. Let's say I'm gonna call this one uh, demo two. I should have just actually prepared this scene in advance, so do bear with me. <laughs> there we go. Right, I'm gonna bring this one down here. So now we've got uh, scene one, which has got the music. We've got our scene two, um, which is just gonna play through. And let's say that we actually wanted the music to stop in scene three, but we wanted a different volume. Let's say scene one was our intro, scene two was where we're gonna talk over it, and then scene three is where we're gonna get into our content or something like that. So what we've got here is we've got the track, as I say, in this scene. Let's now go and go into scene two and we'll drag that same track into there. But in here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually adjust the volume of it like that. And then we're going to say stop when scene ends. So we're building up a sort of chain of them now. So let's look at demo scene one. So there the music is starting and it's starting at full volume or whatever we've set it to. Then we transition into scene two. So let's say there the music's just dipped down a bit, but we're going to be talking over it. And then when we go to scene three, that music has now stopped. So that's how you can build up a uh, multi-scene chain where basically the music is playing at different volumes. And obviously you could have just added in multiple different scenes there with the, the volume going up and down uh, to sort of emulate really, I suppose, ducking. So if there was bits you wanted to talk over and bits that you didn't. I, uh, I think I probably explained that in quite a longer way than was necessary, but there you go. At least I got it out. <laughs> The other thing that is uh, there is if I just come back to that particular track, a new feature is right down at the bottom here. It's only right down at the bottom because it's at the bottom of the screen. Let me put it somewhere where you can see it. When you've got a track playing, you now have this little countdown that is telling you how long you've got left of the track. So that's really useful, obviously, if you uh, want to talk over a particular piece of music and uh, you just want to know how long is left, then that is now displayed there as a countdown. A little addition, but I think really useful. The other thing that they've done is they've uh, added in a fade in and out to uh, music when you pause it. So before, if I was to click pause here, just down here on the actual track itself. Previously, it would just stop it. But now if I press it, there is a slight fade out. And if I press play, 
Uh, well, that's a, a bit of a bad example because it actually starts, doesn't it, straight away. But there's a slight fade out and there's a slight fade in as well. So uh, that is the uh, the other thing that has been added. Now the uh, the next one is related to echo cancellation. So if I come into my settings now, this is still in audio. I'm going to go into the audio section. Uh, previously, there was always this option here for echo cancellation um, if you were using the built-in speakers on the Mac. And the idea was that with that was if you had got you, if you were playing out through the built-in speakers, then you wouldn't want to have the um, uh, then you would want the ability to uh, use echo cancellation so that it wasn't feeding back into your mic. So that was a toggle on and off. Uh, however, when you had got uh, external speakers that were plugged in to effectively the, the jack socket, you know, the headphone socket, um, then that wouldn't be available because Ecamm had assumed that you would be using in-ear monitors or something like that, or using uh, headphones. Um, so all they've done is they've basically just added this option. So if you do have external speakers that are plugged into, you know, your headphone jack, basically, um, then you can now enable echo cancellation again for external speakers here. So, uh, uh, that is the uh, the reason for that, and that is what that is. <laughs> Next, we've also got ads support for uh, enhanced support for voice over accessibility. I'll be honest, this is not something that I've uh, used, but it is uh, obviously for related to accessibility on the Mac and uh, voice over support for that accessibility feature. So I can't really talk to that one too much because it's not something that I've personally used. Next, we're going to come on to the uh, next section, if I just come out of demo mode for a moment, uh, and that is uh, related to movies. Previously, you could have a movie as the uh, scene source. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you come into the uh, scenes tab at the top, uh, in fact, not if you come into the source uh, menu at the top, rather, you can either have it as a blank scene. And usually my scenes, I start out as blank and I just sort of build them up with the different elements in terms of camera overlay, screen share overlays and so on. Uh, but you do also have this option to have a video file as the source. So uh, this would be something like this. So if I click on here, there we go. It's got this uh, little video that's playing. Nice little video of the Ecamm jet there. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> so what would happen here is whenever you flick back away from that scene and then flick back to it again, it would always start the video from the beginning. There we go. And no matter how many times I flick to and from it, it will always start back at the beginning. Well, what they've done now is they've also added in the ability to pick up from basically where you left off. So if I just click on play on that one. I'm just going to pause it for a second uh, and then if I come up to the options menu uh, then we've now got this one here when video ends uh, sorry beg your pardon <laughs> we've got this one which is when video resumes uh, so the default always used to be uh, start from the beginning or the only option used to be start from the beginning that is now the default but you can also change it to start from last location so now what you'll see is if I uh, play this a little bit and we've got past the start, I'll click back to another scene. And now when I click back on that video, you'll see it's actually picking back up from uh, where it left off. Um, the other thing that you've got in that as well, if I just come back to there and pause it, um, the other option that you've got here is... Um, uh, sync from previous scene. So what you can also do is if I was to say duplicate this scene now, so let's say I've got this one, I'm just going to pause it for a second uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll just leave that named as it is, shall we? Let's not mess about with things like that. Let me say I'm going to add my, whoops, add my uh, camera over the top of it. So now when I come into this one and then I switch scene, that video is now still playing seamlessly except those are two different scenes. So you can basically create scenes with uh, videos that are playing in the background. So uh, that's just another great little feature in my estimation <laughs> for, uh, for movies. So uh, I think that that has covered. Uh, oh, and then the other thing is also, if I uh, come back to that scene, beg your pardon, what's one new thing? Uh, so if I come back to here, Uh, so I beg pardon, I've just had to pause for a minute there. There is supposed to be a video playback time as well, which I understand displays here. So the same way before with the audio countdown, you also have the video countdown. Uh, we also 
uh, same way we had with the audio, we should have the video countdown displaying the time left actually up in the top so that when these controls aren't visible, then you can also see that as well. However, it doesn't appear to be showing up. So perhaps I'm missing something on that one. I'll get back to you. <laughs> so uh, that is the uh, features that have been added into the uh, movie mode. So uh, let's get on to the next section, shall we? With that little fumble out of the way. Uh, so the next one is uh, Twitch. So there've been a few updates with Twitch. Basically, Ecamm Live is now using the absolute latest Twitch API. So something that it wasn't actually doing up until uh, this update. Um, and that has added in a few uh, new features. Um, it's also now got add support for added support for uh, Twitch chat and unban, so that you can do that if you're streaming directly to Twitch from Ecamm Live. Uh, then also it's uh, added in Twit chat badges and uh, into the comments window as well, something that wasn't showing up before. Uh, and finally, it's added in support for, uh, oh, this is not actually Twitch. I beg your pardon. I've got my uh, notes a little bit confused <laughs> at short notice. It's now added in support though. This is related to streaming and this is streaming to Amazon. So uh, now when, if you are streaming to Amazon Live, um, there's no extra setup that's needed. So there was an issue before where you needed to adjust video bit rate and things like that. Uh, whereas now it just actually automatically detects that you are uh, streaming to Amazon uh, and so it will comply uh, comply with Amazon's uh, live video bitrate requirement just as a default so uh, that is just another little streaming thing the next one on the uh, list is related to widgets so uh, before in the last version they added in uh, the ability to just drag and drop HTML web widgets directly into the uh, into the interface that so you can just add them in manually so locally stored widgets uh, now they've added in support for uh, local JavaScript script widgets as well. So if you've got uh, JavaScript widgets, they'll work just the same as the HTML widgets would before as well. Um, also, widget rendering has been updated. You'll be pleased to know. <laughs> to use the uh, native M1 uh, Mac version uh, of Chromium, uh, the, the Chromium framework. So basically, that just means that they should run uh, a little bit better because they are now native uh, designed for running on M1 Macs. Next, I've got a few sort of uh, general things really that they've added in, uh, which is where the Amazon one should have been, but never mind. <laughs> so uh, first of all, um, uh, connected iOS devices will not start running as a video source until they are picked in the switcher or used in a scene. So if you connect an iOS device, they would just show up as a camera source. Well, now you have to sort of manually select those rather than you just plug in in your phone and then immediately just popping in as a uh, as a camera source. Um, uh, Calendar selector has been added to the scheduler windows uh, d date picker. So if you are, I can't actually do it from here because I'm uh, recording, but if you are not recording and you go to schedule a, a live stream from within Ecamm to go to Facebook, YouTube, or wherever, uh, then now they've just built in a calendar selector. Um, by the way, incidentally, one thing that I learned uh, just uh, yesterday, the day before, was that if you do upload your thumbnails, if you schedule your, uh, record, your live streams, in Ecamm to go out to YouTube and you upload your thumbnail from there, I understand that the thumbnail will actually be at a higher resolution on YouTube than the than if you just upload it natively to YouTube. But uh, there you go, you learn something new every day. <laughs> Next on the list of uh, general uh, topics, is that function keys F1 to F12 can now be used for scene and sound effect hotkeys. So you can assign those. Um, and then finally, there's also uh, updated plugins for both Loop Deck and Stream Deck. These include a couple of minor fixes and then also uh, support for the automatic scene groups. So uh, now you can go in and pick where you're picking scenes. You can also select those scene groups, the ones that are going to be automatically cycling through uh, those different scenes. So there's not actually from a, uh, a sort of plugin point of view, there's nothing much change there in terms of uh, no drastically different new plugins or anything like that sorry actions uh, it is just that in the scene picker you can now pick those uh, scene uh, um, automatic groups that they had created next we have got a uh, couple of uh, different uh, cameras that have been added in so there has, is now support for native support for Nikon ZFC uh, the Sony Alpha 7R3 and the Sony Alpha A7R4A. <laughs> and those are all native now, by which I mean over USB. So you now can plug those cameras in and they'll just work over, uh, over USB. Uh, so next up, we have got also a couple of uh, minor fixes. Uh, in fact, I've skipped over something there, haven't I? Never mind. My running order's a little out. <laughs> I've literally just gone through all these features, so you'll have to excuse me. Uh, so there is also a few uh, minor fixes as well. 
Uh, so one was um, a fix where an overlay's border thickness could change when switching between retina display and non-retina display. So uh, that's not something that I had experienced myself, but uh, good to know that it's been fixed if you were having that issue. Uh, and the next one was something that I had seen before, which was um, when you export a scene in, uh, oh sorry, a profile in Ecamm Live, it should really package up all of the different overlays, all of the assets and things like that, and keep them in one bundle. Well, there was an issue where it wasn't actually uh, including in that any background assets that so what do I mean by that let's uh, explain that a little bit shall we <laughs> so as of the last major release uh, 3.9 we've had profiles so profiles allows you to create different profiles for your different use cases for Ecamm Live. So I've got quite a few different things that I use Ecamm Live for. And basically, each profile is kind of like a, a fresh start, if you like, with Ecamm. So that includes all of the different scenes you've created, all of the overlays, all of the sound effects and things like that. Uh, and so if you wanted to... Uh, back up that profile or you wanted to share that profile with someone else or you maybe wanted to transfer it over to another computer uh, what you can do is you can do export go to the profile menu and then say export current profile and that will just create one single file that contains all of this information including the scenes the overlays the sound effects and everything like that when you're looking at overlays you have some different areas. So you've got show in all scenes there. So those are overlays that can appear in any scene. Then you've got show in current scene, which is things that you just want to appear in that particular scene. Uh, and then you've got show in the background, which is uh, things that you want in the background. <laughs> well, what was happening was when you exported the profile, it wasn't actually including some of these uh, background ones. And I think also maybe some of the show in all scenes. So it is, uh, they've said in the, uh, the release notes, fixes an issue where assets for global overlays and background overlays were not included in the exported profile so yes indeed it was also these show in all scenes as well so basically it was only exporting with the show in current scene which is obviously not what you want because you're obviously building out the whole thing as a uh, as a as, as an entire profile so that is the last thing that they have uh, included in the release notes uh, and that is it for my little video about it but I don't know what you think but this to me seems like just another awesome update I can't wait to see what's coming in 4 <laughs> version 4 because this is yet another dot release that is just packed with great new features so uh, well done guys and uh, look forward to hearing what anybody else thinks about it in the comments uh, if you have found this video useful then obviously don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> go and turn on notifications uh, and if you really enjoyed it you can always go uh, to my buy me a coffee page at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech uh, and there you can support the channel on a one-off basis or on an ongoing monthly basis as well but that's it for me for now but don't go anywhere because there are still plenty more videos coming up and i'll leave a link to my ecamm live play playlist over on the right hand side and uh, YouTube will pick a video especially for you just up at the top there so until the next video have a wonderful day